Hi there, my name is Izzy. I'm field supervisor for the Social Sciences Analytics Cell on the DRC. I'm going to cover here how the CAS supports the use of evidence to influence responses to public health emergencies. So I'll cover a little bit about the CAS, the Social Sciences Analytics Cell, who we are and what we do. The process of Integrated Outbreak Analytics, IOA, and how this works in practice. And then looking at how we support the use of evidence for influence and monitoring this using the Monito monitoring tool. So the CAS, the CAS is an operational research unit that conducts near to real time, flexible, integrated research in order to inform public health responses. So this is through conducting rapid studies in order to better understand what is happening during, during an epidemic and to explain uh, differential trends in data relating to public health emergencies. The data that we are generating is to inform uh, decision making in response to epidemics and public health emergencies. The CAS supports response actors in using evidence and co-developing recommendations and actions. CAS creates a space for integrated outbreak analytics, bringing together different actors and different data sources to provide a more complete holistic picture of public health emergency. And in doing so, the CAS ensures training of national research counterparts and ensuring that we're developing, building partnerships with national institutions on this process of IOA. So ultimately, we're facilitating evidence-based decision-making for public health emergency response actors, ensuring that, that what organisations, what response actors are doing is based on a genuine need. So we design all of our studies um, ensure their design based on how and uh, by whom results can be used. We don't want to be generating data, results, evidence that will just be presented, maybe appreciated, but not used. So, but the data that we generate, the evidence that we present could be used to inform uh, program implementation, maybe programs uh, that are going to be developed or programs that exist already that the evidence can be used to reinforce. Data to support the drafting of advocacy material or requests for funding, for example, and also evidence that could be used to change or adapt strategy or, or influence policy. And this is also, this, this is um, evidence that we will be presenting to government. So for example, Ministry of Health, international, local, um, national NGOs academic institutions and also um, on a more local level, smaller civil society groups, for example. Essentially, we want to make sure that decisions made by all of these different partners are informed that money is well spent and that the needs of the community are appropriately met. So integrated outbreak analytics, this process, IOA, this is essentially a process adds an extra dimension to our understanding of what is happening during a public health emergency. So we're bringing together data of different types from different sources, analysing it together to provide this more comprehensive picture of, of what is happening. So health dynamics, secondary outcomes of public health emergencies. So for example, these sources could include data looking at community perceptions and behaviours, epidemiological data, um, data looking at the availability, access and use of health services. And this could be qualitative or quantitative as well. So looking at, uh, for example, DHS2 data or direct collection by our teams in the field. Data looking at things like exchange rates, food prices, population movements. Contextual information as well, so this could include information relating to conflict in an area, gender dynamics, traditions, cultures, and all of this also whilst bearing in mind different events uh, that might be occurring and aspects of an outbreak response strategy. So for example with COVID, things like closure of borders, closure of schools, reopening of schools, and how 
these events might impact um, other things we're seeing in data. So it might may impact community behaviors, may impact impact community perceptions, etc. And ultimately, when we're bringing all of this information together, this integration and collaboration supports the reliability and robustness of the results and of the evidence that we're presenting. So how do we ensure that this evidence is used? So we're ensuring inclusivity in survey design and, and study questions. So involving response actors, involving those who will be using this evidence from the beginning. So the more invested they are from the beginning, the more likely they are to, to use the evidence that we're presenting. So this could include commissions and clusters, um, epidemiological and health data analysts, essentially those who will be using the data. We want to make sure that, that they know we're doing the study and that it's going to be as relevant to them as possible. We want to make sure that the questions that we're addressing through this research are the questions that these response actors have and that the information that we will generate will be information that is required. We also need to see what data already exists, whether it's complementary or contradictory. Um, because looking at this process of integrated outbreak analytics, we need to make sure that, that we have as much data as possible. The stronger and more integrated the evidence that we are presenting is, the better it is for use. And this links into data coordination. So um, what different data sources are there? What dates um, can we expect? results from other actors, for example, who might be presenting data to us. Um, and just to make sure that we're, uh, we're working with different partners to the same timeline so everyone is, is on the same page and we know when to expect different things. Um, so second point is looking at establishing mechanisms for use. So we want to make sure that we're discussing results with different researchers and analysts before we're presenting on a, on a larger scale. So is the data that we have good enough? Does it say what we thought it might say? What does it mean? Does it reflect what was seen and heard in the field? So have we done the analysis correctly, for example? Are we identifying and acknowledging limitations in the data that we're presenting? We need to ensure systematic presentation of results as well. So this is multiple different for and multiple different levels also this, this might be during cluster meetings which might be or, or commissions on a level a bit a bit broader a bit more general where we could be presenting everything that we have found or it could be in a way that's slightly more tailored so for every study that we're conducting we will be conducting and developing multiple different presentations so tailoring the presentations based on the audience. So focusing on the most uh, on the most relevant aspects of the results to them. What we'll, do, what we'll do first though also is to present to the Ministry of Health leadership, and this is for validation and feedback as well. And this will typically be the, the results in full. Um, and then following all this, we'll be organizing, looking, looking to organize discussions with individual uh, organizations and decision makers, discuss discussions based on the results. And this is where we have these, uh, these conversations where we look to develop, uh, co-develop recommendations and actions for specifically for them and what they want to use the data for. So this is where the Monito comes in. So it's an approach developed by the CAS innovative approach to support the, uh, to ensure the use of evidence. So the, the general problem is that following, following any piece of research, you can develop a report, you can have presentations which could include recommendations for response actors based on the, uh, based on the evidence, based on the results. And these could be very, very solid recommendations that if they're followed through would have an impact but it's not often that they would include a structure or a plan for implementation. So the risk is just that this evidence that's generated will just be left unactioned. It might be in a report that someone reads and then just puts in their drawer and forgets about. So 
This is where the manita comes in and the process of the of the CAS. So the manito is an online tool, it's a database developed by the CAS to monitor the implementation of evidence-based recommendations. So what we want to do through this is to is to support response actors in doing what they say they're going to do when uh, when they're going to do it. And so with this tool, we ensure that we are um, updating the, the progress of implementation of recommendations in real time as well. I'll show you some examples in a moment just so you can visualize it. Um, but firstly, so this tool we're looking at monitoring by public health emergency, by location, period, study, origin of recommendation, theme of recommendation, the uh, state of progress of imp implementation. So has it been implemented? Um, is it Has it been implemented and completed? Has it been implemented and uh, but is partially complete? Has it been abandoned, for example? Reasons for delay and abandon, if relevant. Different indicators for monitoring progress. So um, this is something that from the beginning, when we're developing a recommendation with an organization, we'll make sure that we have very, very clear indicators. These are things that could adapt over time, but from the beginning, we need to make sure we have something in order to, to measure this progress. Um, we won't just, it won't just be, um, we have in, in the tool, we have drop down lists. I'll, I'll show you this in a minute, but at the same time, we also have ensure a narrative process. So, so that we're, we're including a bit more detail about, um, about the, the process, the partner, the situation, so that we can really have an idea of, of, uh, of what are these rec recommendations? What are these objectives? Of the response actor, um, different requirements for implementation. So this uh, could be something that is identified at the beginning during a conversation with a response actor. Um, so what do they need in order to ensure this recommendation is implemented? Do they need money? Do they need uh, more um, staff? Do they need particular tools? But this could also be something that is uh, that is adapted as we go along. So during this, uh, so this is why the narrative aspect of, of the tool is important. So if, for example, a recommendation is delayed or abandoned, is it because there's something that they need that they haven't got? So for example, more money or, or more staff. Um, and then looking at agreed deadlines for achieving certain objectives. So this again is, is um, looking at the, the previous slide saying that that it's very, uh, it's often that you'll have a, a list of recommendations and but no real plan for for implementation. This is okay. We have a recommendation. We say with the response actor, um, we agree that you will do this by this time, and then we have the deadline reported in the tool. That's what this means. So, um, but again, I'll show you it sh uh, shortly so you can visualize it a bit. Uh, a bit. Um, more effectively. But it's also a tool for identifying and recording challenges and restrictions implementation. Um, so if the recommendations are not being implemented or seen through to completion, why, why is this? This also is a way that our, our teams um, can be, um, it's, it kind of can work as a training tool for them as well. Uh, because if they're developing a recommendation with a response actor, they need to make sure that it's to some degree feasible. And so they're not taking time to identify. Um, yeah, so they, they need they need to make sure that they are identifying potential limiting factors. So, for example, um, we want to avoid presenting to a small organization um, and then having a very enthusiastic conversation with them with a recommendation at the end, which might be something really big and something at very not not feasible given the um, given limitations that they might have to do with their size or um, at just general capacity. So um, this is something we need to make sure that our our teams are are, um, are sticking to as well. Um, so recommendations categorized by source as well. So. Um, often we'll have recommendations that are developed 
directly in the field. So um, with our um, with our teams doing uh, doing research in the field, so direct from the community as well. And this is great because it's a it's very much a, a, a bottom up approach. So we can observe during field research what are the what what are the what are the needs of the community. Um, we also then have the opportunity to test with them if we have a potential solution that we've identified. Um, we also then are looking at co-developing recommendations during presentations with response actors. So what um, I spoke about a bit a bit earlier, we'll present to a response actor, and then following the following the presentation, we'll discuss the results and think together about what what they can do what we can do together to address these particular issues we also then might take uh, re recommendations from previous studies so for example the most recent uh, ebola outbreak the resurgence of ebola in butembo in the eastern drc um, we um, used as the cast rather than going back to Butembo and conducting more studies, doing more research, we took uh, recommendations from existing uh, existing studies that had been conducted in Butembo um, a couple of years previously. So again the point here that we don't we don't always need more data. it may already be existing. Um, and there's no use there's, there's no need to reproduce evidence that already exists. Um, also, then we might look at taking taking evidence from reports of integrated uh, analyses. So we have um, we've got some reports, uh, some CAS reports of uh, that that include data include data from from our research, from our studies, but also data from other from other sources, and. Um, this is this is integrated evidence, um, and um, recommendations can be uh, generated from this evidence as well. But essentially, we want to ensure that that there's reduced burden on communities, and and where possible, use pre-existing evidence and recommendations. So, how does it work in practice? Um, so, through real-time presentation of integrated research results. Um, community generated recommendations, recommendations from integrated CAS studies and from um, actions developed from um, integrated analytics uh, reports. This is actually basically the same as the previous slide, so um, but there is slightly more detail on this one. We'll continue. Um, so for some examples, I'll show you in a minute the actual tool itself, um, but just examples of, of the kind of information we might be collecting and and how it might be how it might be useful. So study theme, so for example, we've been exploring for the last well, over over a year or so um, the the broader impacts of COVID on women and girls in the DRC. So the problem we might identify and we have identified um, and we did identify through um, some of this work so far is that is that uh, pregnant girls and those who have recently given birth are frequently excluded from from school. Um, so a recommendation that we might make, we did make with uh, a response actor that supports um, that that works in uh, with adolescents and reproductive health. Recommendation. Was to draft some draft advocacy material to support uh, mobilisation of funds from from donors, which would then be used to to support the reintegration of pregnant girls into school and civil registration of their children. So, this uh, is an example of an advocacy recommendation. Um, another example. So, from a recent study we were conducting in uh, Caballo territory in Tanganyika was looking at the gender determinants of malnutrition. So one of the major problems here that we identified was that women have extremely limited access to, to markets. So 
and they're required to walk for miles to reach markets. And they're also restricted in terms of how much they can carry. So, um, for example, we were working in some villages where, um, uh, which were 60 kilometers or so away from the nearest market. And it's the women who are tasked with taking produce to market and they are carrying what they can carry on their head as they walk these 60 kilometers. Um, and some of them are doing this several times a week. So one of the recommendations, and this is something that was uh, suggested by the community, was to provide bicycles for women in order to, uh, for them to be able to transport uh, produce to market. So they can also carry more at one time. And this is also, would also be relevant for, um, for carrying and collecting water as well. So even if even if the load on the bicycle will be too heavy to actually to actually cycle, at the moment women will be carrying one uh, bidon, one um, uh, jerry can of of water um, at once. But if they have a bike, they can attach they can attach four at once. And so the amount of time this would save, this is time they could use for uh, they could then use for, for different things, including maybe resting. Um, but in the context of, of whilst looking at malnutrition, it's time that they could um, spend uh, caring for their children more. And this is an example of a, of a programmatic um, immediate intervention that the recommendation and the evidence could be used to support. Um, so yeah, here is just an example of um, the presentation of data from the Minito. So I'll show you in a sec the, in fact, it could make more sense to show now. See if I can. Um, just change the, no, wrong. Okay, here we go. So here is the Manita tool itself. So it's um, it's online. It's an Excel spreadsheet essentially, um, but it it is yeah the tool we use to record information relating to studies and recommendations generated. So each recommendation is given a code here. So depending on the location, the outbreak. Um, so at the moment it's in French, but we'll be we'll be developing um, or having a, a, another version in English as well. Different public health emergencies uh, that we are working with at the moment. At the moment, just uh, DRC, but as um, as we we consider expanding some of the work we're doing to other countries, we'll include different countries here. The um, zone and province that uh, the, the the recommendation was was generated the year the quarter etc um so there are currently quite a few gaps so we're working on uh filling them um but essentially we look here at the different studies the partner or partners who are implementing uh, or have elaborated the to help develop the recommendation. Um, the category of the partner. Um, what else do we have here? The date of the presentation, or when the recommendation was uh, was developed. So, if for example, this was time that we were in the field and we were working with a particular community group um, and developed a recommendation there, then we'd also put this uh, the date there as well. Um, and then this is where we get the uh, the origin of the recommendation. So was it proposed by the community? Was it um, proposed developed proposed, developed real time during a during a presentation? Was it taken from a from a report? Um, then we have so we have space here for the narrative as well. So what's the problem that the recommendation is addressing? The recommendation itself here. Um, this is the bit that's important for our teams to include themselves. So 
narrative information. So cl <laughs> yeah, clearly there's a, a bit a bit of work to do here for us. Um, but it's the yeah narrative information about about the um, what is what is needed for the implementation. So does the organization think it has enough money to put it into practice? Does it need uh, more staff? What, su what support is needed? And um, this should go in here. Um, describing the action. So describing uh, what is needed, describing in more detail the recommendation. Um, what are the indicators? This is extremely important because we need to be able to monitor the implementation. Um, and so, and these are things that can be adapted um, as um, as we go along, if necessary. The date for follow up here also. This is this is something that's that's vital that our teams put in. And every week we have a uh, review of the Manito to ensure that the dates are they are on track with dates and making sure that the relevant team has followed up uh, when they said they when 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 they've agreed that they will more narrative information here um, and then this is also where we report report um, dates that recommendations may be implemented and what's the state of progress so we have completed um, implemented uh, in progress partially implemented delayed and abandoned and this is where we'd include reasons for abandon and reasons for uh, reasons for delay. One of the reasons we have so much, um, sorry, one of the reasons we have uh, so many gaps here at the moment is that we've just been adapting a new, uh, it's, a, it's a relatively new model for the Manito. So some of the, the recommendations that are slightly older, we were in the process of going back and, and checking, um, checking where we are with them. Um, so uh, this is a work in progress. Um, this link here is a link to documentation on the recommendation also needs to be populated. But so for example, if we say, if there's a recommendation that says it's completed, where is the evidence to show that it is complete? Is it a, an email, for example? Is it a document, for example, here, it's a press release from UNICEF, um, relating to the reopening of schools. So a CAS study looking at the impact of the school closures on, on children and adolescents. Uh, data from this study was used by UNICEF evidence to, um, to support uh, um, for advocacy, to support the reopening of, uh, of schools in the DRC. So we've put a link to this, to this uh, um, press release there. So that's just an example of, well, just showing you how, how the Manito works. And um, so it's regularly updated. We have here as well, I'll, I'll show you just here um, an example of just some pivot tables uh, that we've, um, which we can uh, develop based on, just make based on any of the, the data we have here. Um, but also in this um, in the presentation, let me just go back and um, show the presentation again. Um, so this is just a slightly nicer version of uh, those uh, graphs and and the data from the Manito. But what it can show here, for example, and what this what this um, graph shows here is that yeah, 51% of all recommendations developed since April have been completely implemented, and this is from 233. Um, and then another example that of 25 developed in Goma, 92% have been implemented. So looking at the data like this um, just allows us to track progress by uh, by zone. Um, by uh, public health emergency, by state of progress, for example. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a slightly nicer way of looking at it than, than Excel. It right? depends, depends who you are and how you uh, like different Microsoft packages. But um, 
another example here, so looking at the number of recommendations uh, per quarter as well. So yeah, 55% developed since April were related to the Ebola responses in Bandaka and Butambo. So it allows us to monitor also things that might be, um, may, maybe even, I mean, things, things like the, the work of our teams and if there are reasons why different recommendations are being followed up, different recommendations are being implemented fully in particular areas or at particular times of year, why, why are these things, where are the limitations, how can, maybe it means we need to change the way, way that we're working. Um, or it may mean that different public health emergencies are slightly more complicated in terms of how uh, their recommendations can be developed and, uh, and implemented. Another example then, yes, it's looking at the, at the origin of recommendations and the actions developed. So um, uh, um, how many of them are being developed in real time during presentations? How many have been proposed by the CAS and by the community? How has this impacted their implementation? So for example, if, if they are um, developed by the community, by the CAS, are they more likely to be implemented? Um, that kind of thing. So the next steps in the Minito process. Um, so just to really visualize it, yeah. So once we've developed the recommendations, imagine it's it's uh, following a presentation. Imagine we've gone to imagine pre pre COVID times, and we've gone to the office of an organization, and um, we present to them the results with a very tailored presentation that's relevant to, to them and their organization. And then we sit with them, we discuss the results, we discuss the, the issues, and we discuss with them how they can uh, address these problems. Um, so um, it's then the responsibility of our team um, so the, the, the team who have been presenting to these organizations, it's their responsibility to follow up with the focal person of this partner. Um, this could be by calling them or going visiting them in person on the pre-agreed date. So in the Minito, like I showed before, and there was the section saying um, that, yeah, they, that we will follow up on this date. This is the date that we need to make sure we are following up with them. Um, and during this follow-up, so it's reviewing the, the progress of implementation. So looking, um, but there needs to be a really clear quantifiable report of the attainment of indicators. So we can't just believe what we hear because we can't call up and say, have you done this? And, and they say, yes, you know, maybe they have, but it's just really to, to, to ensure impact we have we need we need evidence to show that our evidence is 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 being used um, we then are looking at we discuss the challenges so what are the what are the blocks from implementation or, uh, of recommendations if they exist if there are blocks are there need for is there a need for reformulation of the recommendations to ensure that object, objectives are achievable given the budget or or logistical constraints, or rather than reformulating, does it mean that there will be a, um, a need to request support? This might be finance, might be logistical or HR support. Um, then the next step then is to agree, so the CAS and this uh, implementing partner or response actor um, need to then agree on next dates for follow-up and for check-in um, and indicators that we're following if they may have changed and then uh, finally yeah the, the the update of the progress narrative of discussion and dates for follow-up are then included in the Minito tool and this is so that um, anyone who might be happening to check the Minito who might be following up with a, a partner on a particular recommendation is is 100% clear where we're at um, uh, what happened during the last conversation. None of this is really to hold the response actor accountable. You know, it's not it's not our position to to say why haven't you done this, etc. But it's it's just to make sure that that uh, the evidence that we've generated that is 
that is appreciated, that's required, that can have impact, is being used um, in in the appropriate way and um, ensuring that that the uh, that programs are going to be are going to be uh, the most most positively impacted um, using this evidence. Um, Okay, so there we go. Um, that was a fairly brief overview, but the idea will be that um, fairly frequently we'll have updates of where we are with um, with the uh, Manito. Um, and but in the meantime, any any questions, any reflections, um, don't hesitate to get in touch, um, and um, appreciate your support. Great, thanks so much. Bye.